Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is XD. I'm a DJ and music producer based in Cape Town. Glad you're here. So last week ago, Apple announced the new iPad. They had an event where they announced the new iPad. And as you guys know that Logic Pro is now on iPad. So they were focusing more on iPad stuff. And then as they are announcing Logic Pro and Final Cut for iPad, they also announced that they're also going to be updating Logic Pro for desktop or laptops or whatever you have. And that was super exciting because they announced it as it's going to be a logic pro 11 and not just an update of 10 so all of us were super excited i was super excited to be like yo they're finally moving from 10 to 11 and that was super cool to hear so then the day came for us to update and the update is here now so i loaded up the update so the update has a few new things that they listed that that are there they have a new plugin uh, some new stuff for like bands and stuff like that and they also announced a stem splitter so this is basically what all these daw companies have been putting out like a way to like split stems out of any file that you have so it's super interesting i want to try it out today and see what it is and then i also have some thoughts right at the end of the video about this whole update situation and you know but stay tuned for that but let's check out what's new in this update so this is new logic pro 11 like i said so right here on the first page you can see that they now added this what's called session player right here right so we have midi we have pattern and then we have audio and then now we have session player so this session player has a drummer a bass player and a keyboard player so apparently this is based off ai this is kind of like the new ai thing which for me ai is cool and all as much as i can take but it's starting to get really frustrating it's like every company is trying to go the ai route so what it does is that, you know, it's, it's mostly for bands. As you can see, it's got a drummer, a bass player, and a keyboard player. But for me and my channel, I make electronic music. So I don't know how this is going to be useful for us people that play electronic music. But I'm just going to try it out for you. So let's start with the drummer. If I load the drummer. And by the way, I am using a MacBook Air M1 right now using this update. And I'm just going to choose let's try let's see what they have okay they have different styles here i'm just going to choose maybe modern r&b like that and then i'll say create so this is all happening in real time of course yes i am screen recording but here here here's how it loaded up so it loaded up like this so let me just play back before i even touch anything Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then if you look down here, you'll see that there's some um, controls right here. This is where you start to customize everything that's in here. And I'm sure it will change what's happening up here. So let me just raise the complexity and drop down the intensity. I can see that these waves are changing. And let's increase the fill amount and the swing and the fill complexity like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now let's add a new bass player so that we see what that what that's going to do. I wonder if it's going to create something new or it's just going to... I wonder well, how it's, it's going to turn out. So I see it's loading. It's taking a little bit of time. I'm showing this for you in real time so that in case you also have an M1 Mac, this is what you kind of expect. Okay, not bad. Now for the last part, let me add the keyboard player. I wonder if it's gonna go with the bass uh, with the bass that is added here. So I'm assuming that could be where the AI is gonna be coming into. You know, like how it picks up whatever other sessions are playing, and then it makes something coherent. Let's just hear how that sounds. There we go. So now let me just play all of it together. Okay. Wow, congratulations, Apple. You've made something really cool right here. So I was really wondering if that's going to really have an impact if all these things were connecting because you just saw what I just did there. I just added these channels and I didn't even choose what chords to play or what key everything is in and anything. It's just adding uh, with itself. It's not really like letting me choose so i guess that's where the ai part comes in right that's really cool to see that's really really awesome okay so the next thing they added here is the chroma glow plugin 
Okay, so I put together a beat here, a quick beat. We're just using Apple Loops so that we can have something that we can try out this new plugin on. So this is how the beat is sounding. Really nice, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the... I'm going to add the chroma glow. So it's a saturation plugin, so I'll probably just start by adding it to the drum. So I'm just going to solo the beat. And then I'm going to go to audio effects and let's see if we can find it right here. So there you see chroma glow and stereo and there you go. So here's how it looks like, right? So let's play this back and see if it's going to react if something is going to come out here. Now I'm going to raise the drive as I play. I'm sure you can hear the difference is really clear here and it's a really good saturation. I, I like the quality of the saturation and the harmonics it's adding to it. There's a model here so you can choose the kind of model, right? So retro tube, modern tube, magnetic squeeze, analog preamp. So let's see if we change these, what happens. Wow, that's really cool. You can totally hear the difference of each preset, like each type, each model. You can hear the difference of how they react, how the audio is sounding after that. You also have a clean or colorful, and then you also have bypass below. So you bypass a certain frequency. That's really cool to see. Level in, level out mix. And then you have a low cut and a high cut in case you want to do stuff like that. That's really cool. So I like this bypass below because it can help you protect your low frequencies like your, your low end in case you're working on something like this, like a beat like this with drums and you want to saturate it or even like a bass. If you want to add more harmonics to the mid frequencies and the high frequencies, you can use this to just make sure that it bypasses below that certain frequency, which is really cool. I can't wait to play with it and see what happens. And I really love the graphics. It just looks pretty cool. And now we're going to go try out the stem splitter. So what I'm going to do is with this beat, I'm just going to make sure that I add a little bit of a vocal and then I'm going to put everything together and consolidate it and freeze it to one file. And then we're going to try and see if we can extract all these stems and see what's going to happen. So let me add some vocal. Okay, so I added a vocal here, as you can see. And as I was adding this vocal, it's from the Apple Loops packs. I noticed something different. You can see they're now indicating the chords right down here you can see there's a major seven right here a g6 and f major seven so i'm not sure if they are detecting uh the chords in the vocal or in the file itself or maybe there's information in the file because when you look at the apple loops they do mention the key the file is in right here on the right side so i'm not sure where they're getting these if it's the artificial intelligence i really don't know but that's something new that i just wanted to point out but now i added a vocal this is how it sounded like Really cool, right? So now let me consolidate all of this and just and just bounce it in place. Okay, so everything is bounced. So you can see that it's all just one file, this file here. And I'm going to go and right click down here. And then I'm going to go to processing. That's where you'll find stem splitter right here. So I'm going to click on it. And then it's going to let me choose uh, what is. If I want to just do vocals, drums, or bass, or other, I can do that. In this case, I'll just do everything so that it gives me everything. And then I'm just going to listen to what is going to spit out. And I added uh, some reverb and delay to the vocals to kind of throw it off and give it a difficult time. So because I want to hear at the end of the day what it's going to do. So I'm just going to say split like this. Wow, that was really quick. That was way quicker than I expected. I guess because it's a, it's a smaller file. So probably why. So it created a group right here. As you can see, there's a group here. That's right here. So this is the original file. Let me just remove the solo so this is the original file that's up here and then now here's the stems it's marked stems right here and these are the original files below it so i'm just going to focus on these and i'm going to open that Bye. 
Okay, so let's listen to the vocals. Mind games, mind games. You'd rather play mind games. Not bad. I can still hear a little bit of some artifacts there, but it's really not bad. It's acceptable. Now let's listen to just the drums. Wow, the drums sound beautiful. They sound really great. Now let's hear the bass. Yeah, I guess the bass is just mostly low frequency, so I, I don't expect it to do you know something that's terrible. And then there's this other. Okay, so it, it picked out the instrument parts, which are these chords. It sounds really good, like the stem splitter sounds really great. I love the fact that we now have uh, stem splitting in Logic Pro. Finally, we have that, and the plugin itself sounds really good. But you let me know what you think down below about all these updates. For me personally, these updates are, are cool, they're acceptable. But the only problem that I have is that this update feels very very lackluster it doesn't feel grand like they said it's going to be logic pro 11 but this update feels more like a logic pro 10 point something like it's, it's it still feels like it's 10 because not much really has changed here it's only a few things that have changed so it's very underwhelming for me personally yes they're trying to incorporate a little bit of some ai stuff going on there and that's really cool i like that but as musicians we're not really so into ai that much you know speaking for myself but i've been also seeing what other people are saying about air because we want to be hands-on with our music we're not trying to have something help us create stuff because we want to be hands-on that's why we have keyboards that's why we have instruments so that we can do the work ourselves and then build from there if ai is trying to aid us in what we're trying to do in our creative visions then it's cool it's acceptable but not for to you know to compose everything for us i don't think that's a really good idea when it comes to chroma chroma glow I, I really like it it's a really cool addition of a plugin i really would have wished they would have added more plugins though instead of just the one or even update the older plugins like es2 and plugins like that that are more old school that would have been a really cool idea and another thing i was really hoping they would add to this update was the browser i really wish that they would update their browser so that the browsing is much more fluid and much more responsive and faster and when you're trying to select sounds as the music is playing you don't have problems it's very quick like this you know they should follow fl studio because fl studio's browser is like top level browsing when you're working on your music is just so seamless i really hope they can change it in the future updates and overall it's an okay update not really much to write home about to be honest with you you know they just tried their best but i really hope now that it's 11 they're gonna keep uh, updating more things to come and i'll be looking out for their next apple event where they're going to talk about laptops and desktops and things like that maybe maybe they'll just announce even like a newer update because i think that's going to be months away from now maybe then they'll uh, announce some more updates on logic pro that will really give us everything and really make 11 feel like 11 because right now logic pro 11 is not really feeling fully like logic pro 11 just feels like 10 point something but let you let me know what you think about this update are you impressed what what are you excited about in this update let me know down below if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop it a like and also subscribe if you're new here i'll catch you in my next video i'm x and i'm out peace